All right, more Cardinals franchise. I know you're all hungry for more of this series. Welcome back. It's episode five. We're a quarter of the way into year one, and we've now made the first big trade, sending Paul Goldschmidt to the San Diego Padres. In return, we added the MLB's 16th-ranked prospect and one of the best starting pitcher prospects in baseball. And that's just the beginning of what I have planned with this team. Was it early to trade Paul Goldschmidt? Sure. I've had my vision with this team, and seeing us get off to a poor start, I was ready to just go forward with that vision. There's going to be more trades to come, maybe even some today. We are approaching the MLB draft. We should definitely have a lot to talk about there as we continue to look at outfielders and round out our plans at seven. I did want to talk about some feedback on the last episode as well. And I knew anytime I do a big trade, I know I'm either going to get a ton of feedback saying it was I got too much in return or too little. Ultimately, I used the Justin Verlander trade last year as an example. When he was traded from the Mets to the Astros, and Verlander being like a 40-year-old pitcher, so you know he's year to year at that point, the Astros gave up both Ryan Clifford and Drew Gilbert to get him. Gilbert being the big addition there in that deal with a potential having, you know, a chance to be a really high-level player. And then there's Ryan Clifford, who in, I know in past games, I've seen him with C potential. He does have B potential here. So they got two really good outfield prospects. We ended up getting one of the best pitching prospects. And I know that the second player I put into the deal wasn't like a huge addition. I could have gone with somebody else. There was like Eggy Rosario. I wasn't going to go after Ethan Salas. Just I'm not going for the top prospects in those situations when it's more of a rental. Looking at the teams that I thought made sense to make trades with, Lesko was the prospect I really wanted. And if we were to throw anybody else into the deal, I mean, I wasn't going to put him and Snelling, but the Padres don't really have a super strong farm system either. So I got one of the best pitchers. And maybe the second player we got ends up being a contributor at some point. But the main thing was, of course, to get Dylan Lesko. And then today we are going to try out playing the full game on All-Star for pitching. You know, I've been noticing that pitching in this game has just felt different than past years. Like, we're getting hammered on good pitches, and every game I've played has had a poor pitching outing. I haven't played a ton, and obviously in baseball you want a large sample size. But I looked at giving up runs in nearly every inning I've had with Sonny Gray, getting hammered by the Oakland Athletics, and seeing some other feedback around classic pitching this year, and I want to see what All-Star is like. Ultimately, I'm just looking for a, a ratings-based feeling game, and of course something that resembles what I've seen now in the last two franchises I've done on the show, and from the beginning... Hall of Fame in this game just hasn't felt like Hall of Fame in the last games. And I'm not sure if there's something wrong with classic pitching. It's been pointed out that after all these pitches, like it's showing we have late timing. There's no timing involved with classic pitching. I don't know if that is a bug, if it's just a visual bug and we should ignore it, or what's going on there. But the next step is just to try All-Star and see if it feels like the experience I'm used to in the show. I've seen people have issues with Classic this year, with Pinpoint, and obviously it seems that pitching is just more difficult than it's been in recent years, and I'm fine with it being difficult, but I still want my players to matter. But as we get back to the baseball action, we enter with a 21-25 and record. It's actually not in all that bad of a spot right now feel like the team is actually trending in the right direction gotten that batting average up a little bit and the scoring as well 21 ain't good but better than 25 pitching's been a rough area the entire year and it remains that way and there's a chance we end up trading kyle gibson who's easily been our most impressive starting pitcher Miles Michaelis, Sonny Gray, Lance Lynn, these guys have had their struggles, but no, not Gibby. He can't strike anybody out here at age 36, but the guy is getting outs, and someone's going to value that. 4.3 caper nine, though. 
I'm not sure these numbers are sustainable at all. I mean, the quarter of a home run per nine innings. There's going to be some regression. We might want to trade him before it hits. And of course, we are sitting here three games out of first place. And normally in my series, I'm not selling at this stage, but I guess I had my plans coming into this series. I don't look at the Central as being like a World Series determining division. And while I could put all my resources into trying to win the division this year, I know that just looking at trade value and everything that with the age of this team, you focus on winning the division right now and trying to add to possibly do it. You're looking at like 2026 being bleak, given this team's farm system and the age of the current roster. I guess the one thing that helps out is the Cardinals will spend some money. So you could be active in free agency to a degree. Ooh, Sunny Gray has the bases loaded here, two to one, but we're going to sim through a three to one win, taking a series here from the Red Sox with Sunny Gray going seven, giving up the one run. Wow, Dylan Carlson hurt again. That's going to be a 10 day IL stint for him. Getting close to the end of May, and we just won a series against the Orioles, lost. The first two here to Chicago, division battle there. And let's go check on the scouting. Here is Wes Stratton. So another option for us that should have really high potential there at seven. Stratton is 22. Looks like his best outlook is controlling walks, limiting hits. Honestly, he doesn't do anything at an elite level or at a poor level. So he is a well-rounded player, has really high stamina too, so might be able to go deep into games. I'm a fan. And these left fielders got to be just about wrapped up here. 85, Roger Correa, yet another high option there. We got James Martinez coming in 74th on the board, while 109 on the MLB. So could he be an option there with our second pick when that comes around? Contact on base and possibly some good defense there as well. So a lot to like with James Martinez. Norris Sullivan, another option there with that number 83 selection. Switch hitting outfielder, well-rounded offense. And I think after seeing so many high contact, low power guys in the last game, I'm definitely wanting a little bit more pop here with this team. It's not like we had a problem hitting home runs in that A's franchise, but I had trouble finding prospects that checked those boxes. Like, it's refreshing to just see prospects here like Miguel Lopez. He's a lefty who mashes righties with great power, but might not be much of a high contact, high on base guy. This is uh, maybe a DH power specialist in the future. I just like looking at prospects like anybody else would, and you try to tell yourself the story of a guy succeeding, and I just feel like there's more unique stories in this game. Richard Hughes, a little bit lower on the potential there, but he might be one of those late round guys. Good speed, well-rounded bat. Yeah, I could see that being an option there as well. I might even try to do a little bit more with the discovery here, but I don't know if my other scouts are going to really be good at it. That's 15% this week. I want to wrap up those outfielders. We can get 10 with our lower rated scout. I'm going to do more discovery. I'd like to just it, the, the hunt, man, the thrill of the hunt, finding players who are unranked that suddenly pop up on the board out of nowhere. And then we have all the info on early starting pitchers, but I feel like I want to get a little more for maybe that 83 to 113 range. I've got to get some more info here on Marvin James. Whenever I see that well above average upside there popping up and in this much abundance, like we got to get the info there. Really enjoying the scouting sessions we're having so far here in the franchise. We got bottom of the eighth, St. Louis down by a run here, and ooh, we come from behind, avoid the sweep. So we're still hovering around 500, even without Paul Goldschmidt. Cincinnati has a worse record than us, and we're able to go on a little win streak here. How about a sweep? Might be our only one so far. 
The Cardinals have won four games in a row. They're 28 and 28. This next game is a game that can put us above 500. I'm actually going to do our first player lock game here of the series. I know it's the third straight episode, but I'd like to pitch again here with Sonny Gray. He's on a three-year deal, so with guys like him and Arenado, I know I have like next year as an option to trade these guys, or in the offseason even. Prioritize moving Goldie because of the MVP start and uh, the one-year contract. So how about a four-run lead here early on? And now I want to pay attention to the release timing it's giving us here. So... Very late is what it shows on that bottom left. I have no idea really what that's referencing as the sinker is in there on the outside. Now, you do have the option of either pressing the button, as I'm doing here. You can also hold the button down to try and get more break or more velocity on a pitch. And sometimes I break that out with two strikes. Let's do that here. You hold it until the controller vibrates. That's foul. What was the release timing there? Again, very late. So no matter what I do, it is reading very late. That could be a visual bug or something else could be up. It's hard to say. Got him though with the sinker at 92. That's Merrifield, the center, and he has a base hit. Might want to be a little careful here. Bryce Harper. Fastball's in. 44 RBIs. I get, you know, we're like 50 games or so into the year. That's still like, isn't the RBI record like 160? And he's still maintaining that one per game pace. Harper hitting 302 and puts it in play. Out at second, we turn to a one, two, three. Well, not really traditionally, but Gray faces the minimum. Schwarber's got 44. He leads off the second. It is six to nothing. We win this game, we go above 500, and then it's like, all right, how does that affect our plans the rest of the way? Because I, I was already thinking about trading Gibby. And then I had uh, a guy in mind to sign off the streets. Not even on a team. Gray doing a good job getting ahead, though. 0-2 on Castellanos as we break out the cutter. Well, that wasn't exactly close. Count is evened up and away with the fastball. End up hanging one there and getting away with it. Ninth pitch of the AB. Castellanos finally looks at strike three. After fighting off all the off-speed stuff. Two down. It's Real Muto on the ground to second. Gray through two. Working at a really good pace here. Marsh takes low. It's a full count. Leading off the third. Pitch 27. Nice cutter up and in and skied the left. Everybody in this lineup has ridiculous numbers. They're all hitting really good averages, bunch of RBIs, a lot of runs scored here with the Phillies. And again, got away with one left over the plate. That one up the middle and through. It's Johan Rojas here, the nine hitter. Takes up and in. Sonny grazes that inside edge. Strike three. Three strikeouts. Now back to the top. Trey Turner with two down. And Turner lifts this to left, but not hit all that hard. And we're still up six to nothing here through three. Could be a long outing here for Sonny Gray. Gave up only a couple singles to this point. Doing a really good job hitting that bottom edge of the strike zone. And then he's done really good pitching up and into righties as well. Well, that wasn't where I wanted it. And Merrifield dumps it down the line. 
I'm pretty sure I've already allowed myself like five hits to Whit Merrifield in this series. Leadoff man is on for Bryce Harper. Oh, I could have used that. He's going on to second. Not in time. So a runner in scoring position now for Philadelphia. And he'll move up 90 feet on the Harper ground out. Wow, Schwarber nearly connected for a two-run bomb there, but a little early. That came off the bat pretty hard. Could really use a strikeout. And Sonny just off the outside corner. Dude, these are close. It's 0-2. I'd be waving at both of those. Suddenly, full count. Trying to pitch a tough one here on the outside. And it's lifted. Yeah, that's going to be a sacrifice. So it doesn't come until the fourth inning where Sonny Gray gives up a run. I know before this year is done, I'm definitely going to have a couple of sessions. Oh, that's an error. But I'll get a bunch more games in. So I'm sure I'll sit down and play a few and maybe put up some of the highlights in a, a future video. I want to do a prospect spotlight at some point, probably towards the end of the year once there's more info to talk about. We could definitely do an update, though, and just see who's performing, who's struggling. Because not everybody uh, develops at the same rate. And if you don't perform in the show, you don't develop. Potential is literally just potential. It is not making you good. You've got to be able to succeed with the ratings you have before potential rewards you, which is an interesting dynamic because you want potential, but also a skill set that a guy is able to grow with. So if you've got eight potential, but the guy's hitting with, you know, 32 contact, 27 contact, and not much better power, well, it's either going to take a while or it might not happen. Waving is Brandon Marsh, and that is another strikeout for Sonny. Give him four. There's been some mixed reviews on more of like the CPU, CPU games I've had in episodes. I included a lot of those early on so that we just get more looks at players and because I want to move quickly this year. But I'd rather not like get to the end of year one and have me only play like five or six games. And also it's like idle time. So I don't have to actually really do anything for those CPU, CPU games other than edit those up. Belted to the scoreboard in right field and Alec Boom has a double. I enjoy those idle games just to get extra gameplay I wouldn't otherwise record. Rojas up the middle and through. Bohm is waved and Bohm scores. Second run across for Philadelphia. Trey Turner now. He's going to right field. The Phillies getting hot suddenly and they've got runners at the corners. Rojas can fly. Turner can fly. If Merrifield puts something in the gap here. It's going to be a two-run game. He's been a real tough out. Want to pitch a little more uh, finesse here. See if we can try to get a, a sneaky strike to go our way or something. Two-hit wit. Up the middle, make it three. On his way to third is Trey. Six to three, and the Phillies don't appear done. A lot of trouble here for Sonny. Can we get a, a mound visit or something? I can't trigger that when I'm in a player lock like this. 74 pitches in, running into trouble, and there's some danger in the batter's box right now. Bryce Harper just dipped under 300 on the season. Sure, would like to fix that. Out at second. Big double play to get us out of this fifth inning. 
Couple of double plays in this outing for Sonny Gray, but after a great start, he's not getting out of here unscathed. Eight runs or eight hits given up. I sure hope we don't give up eight runs again. Getting one more inning here, and we'll see if he can handle the heart of this order a third time. You like to trust your ace to do that. Schwarber a little late. And that is a perfect pitch to get him. Sonny with a full count now on Castellanos in a four-run game. Yeah, I'm thinking he's going to have to probably not face too many more batters. Got him, though, on the high slurve. Maybe we can take care of Real Muto and at least achieve the quality start. Keep Sonny in line for a victory. I feel like some of my best pitches I've been able to make in this game have all been fouled off. It's never the ones I think are going to get the strikeout. I'll throw like three on the corner, they fight off, and then it's like a fastball that's not even on the edge, and they stare at it. Grounded to third. Arenado reliable as ever. And Sonny Gray completes six. And that is going to do it for Sonny in this game. As the Cardinals take care of business. I noticed there it returned me to simulating. I'm not totally sure what I want to do with this custom game entry. I almost feel like I'm better off just shutting it off because I've gotten so used to just... What I did last year, and it, it felt fine. And if this game is throwing weird curveballs at me, then uh, maybe I'm better off without it. But that outing there, six innings, eight hits allowed, six Ks, three earned runs. And I, I thought that was the outing that felt the most like how I feel the show is supposed to play for me and how it's played in the Rockies franchise and certainly in the A's franchise. That was the closest thing I've experienced thus far. Welcome to being above 500, everybody. 29 and 28. 7 and 3 over our last 10. Let's do this little situation as well. This one seems like fun. So it's a 2-1 Cardinals lead. We have Ryan Fernandez in the game. And the Phillies have the tying run at third. Trey Turner at the plate. Fernandez. One and two. Got to keep that one down. On the ground. And win gets the out the short way. Let's see if we can hold on here. We're going to play the whole game. The whole remainder of it. You know, I love to know the story behind how the Cardinals got some uniforms here that are blue-ish. Like, they're certainly blue, but it's it's not like Mr. Hurricane kind of blue, right? So, the Cardinals, I mean, the name is right there. They're the red team as Arenado inside outs it to right field. I didn't actually realize, but Wilson Contreras has been one of our best offensive threats this year. He has hit now 11 home runs. He's gotten really hot this episode then. That came out of nowhere. I know he has a homer today. Hitting 298. So we're getting some spectacular play out of the veteran catcher. Chopper to third, though. Could be two, and it is. I love that move, though. Like, they had all those years with Yadier Molina. They weren't about to see what life is like with a young, unproven catcher. They just wanted the easiest transition ever. And I, I can respect that. We're going to bring in Giovanni Gallegos. I'd like to up that strikeout rate. Drop that uh, ERA and lefty average a little bit. Bullpen has been... Really unpredictable so far in this series. You know, they really changed the overall scales in the show, really going back to last year. It's not normal to have a bullpen full of, like, 70-plus overall relievers. There are guys in the 50s and 60s everywhere. Newt Bar on the run tracks it down. 
Oh, I better make sure I got the right guy at first base today. Yeah, that was a bit of a mess. Jordan Walker, that works for me. Bryce Harper. You know, I really should be careful with that first pitch fastball. A lot of times I'm like, I'm not being risky. I'm trying to throw it, you know, outside the zone or something. And they miss in the zone. And it's like, well, if you're going to miss, just miss out of the zone, dude. Got him! Up and in! Great at bat for Gallegos. All heaters that time. Still got to deal with the power of Schwarber. That's to right. Yeah, Newt Bar was playing way back near the track. That uh, is a base hit for Schwarber and brings up Castellanos. Now I can bring that slider back out. I'm always hesitant here if I don't know the relievers. Like, can I throw a slider to a lefty or is it dangerous with this guy? Got to earn my confidence there. And Castellanos pokes one to left. That tying run is now at second base. And I have no one else getting up. I might get Zach Thompson up. Just if, like, if Real Muto reaches, then, you know, there's no reason to see Gallegos keep going. We'll get left on left after that. Gallegos quickly ahead of Real Muto. Got him with the slider. And we'll have a lead for Helsley in the ninth. Unless we're about to pour uh, a bunch more on. And nothing to swing at yet. Light's certainly going to be green, though. Gorman popped up. Got a great pitch to swing at. I'd do it again. The power seems to be coming around for guys like Newt Bar. He's up to five, and why not make it six? Gone to deep right field, a 3-1 Cardinals lead. You know, in year one, I was building towards, you know, being sellers and just fast forwarding this season for the most part. Let's get some information and get out of here. This team, though, is getting hot. Ryan Helsley is 15 of 16. Righties have given him a really big problem. They're hitting for twice the average of lefties. Got the lefty Marsh to lead off. The 7-8-9 hitters now for Philadelphia. And he is currently tied for fourth in the National League in saves. Looks like the Padres are using Yuki Matsui as their closer. That's pretty cool. Marsh keeps it going. Not biting on the curve, and the count's full. Contreras said slider. I'm throwing slider. Down and in. Leadoff man's on. And that brings up Alec Bohm. 100 from Ryan Helsley. Oh, that was perfect. Wynn has one shot. Gets the out at first. Had a long travel for that one. And they're going to hit for Pache. Bring in Bryson Stott. Hey, you might not have liked the trade for Paul Goldschmidt getting Dylan Lesko. At least we didn't recreate the Matt Olson trade and get Christian Pache just to DFA him. If anything, I probably could have gotten a little bit more in that deal. They just didn't have the prospects to... To compliment. Two and one. 102, man. He's really reaching back here. I'm not even trying to reach that max velocity. If that's what he's throwing, though, why am I playing around with these secondary pitches, man? 103, and he still gets a piece. After seeing a couple above triple digits like that, how can you even, like, read a curve? Ooh. Dude. You got to be careful, man. Popped him up, and Contreras, it's going to be tough. At his own dugout. Guys, come on. I'm not sure what I could have done there. Yeah, that wasn't a good idea. All right. Fastball 3 2. 
Got him! Blew him away at 103. And it's up to Trey Turner. 102. You know, I didn't know Helsley had Velo like that, to be honest. Oh, that works. Oh, and two. He missed outside. But now we struck him out, and Helsley gives us another victory. The Cardinals have thrived here in May after an 11 and 19 start. I realize now we're on to June, right? Man, I cannot believe how much better we're playing. After objectively making this team worse, we got rid of Goldie, but got healthier. I wonder how this team would have looked if we had Newt Barr right away, Tommy Edmond right away, instead of playing unproven outfielders. Still pitching would have not been different. That's still bad. Marvin James. We're not quite finished scouting him. I might run one more week there. He is from Canada. And then we did discover a couple infielders. Let's go take a look at what we learned. First baseman Kenny Price is not ranked on the Cardinal board. And the shortstop Steve Cosmo is 55th. All right. Looks to be a really good defender, not a very good hitter. But still, this is really fun to find prospects. You know, I didn't really experiment much with Discovery last year. I felt like it takes a while to, like, scout a region in full, getting 10 to 15% at a time. And instead of really wanting to focus on just, like, a couple of regions and a couple of positions, I think I was going a little too broad at times, not giving myself the chance to discover gems like Steve Cosmo. We got a bunch of these left fielders now finished. Roger Correa is going to be 12th on the board. Norris Sullivan, 82. A perfect spot there with that second selection of ours. Miguel Lopez, 115. Perfect for that round four range. I might go ahead and just do infielders again. I'd love to get some more options there. I feel way more comfortable with our outfield future and outlook than our infield. Okay, this is interesting. Billy Murray, he's up to one on our board, but only 21 on the MLB board. There's 5% left. I feel like I should probably get that five. I can go starting pitcher east and just finish that one up. That looks really interesting. And then I want to wrap up Chester Montano. It might be tough to get him with our second pick, but he looks so solid that I'm willing to put more scouting information and resources into finishing his profile. So we're currently a half game out of first place. And now the home run leader is Wilson Contreras with 11. Nolan Gorman has 9. Nolan Arenado has 8. In terms of OPS, it goes Contreras, Solano in limited at-bats, and then Lars Newtbar, Brandon Crawford. Brandon Crawford actually hitting pretty well this year. Regression, though, there's no stopping it. Arenado, 7.99. Jordan Walker, 7.37. He is getting a little bit lower power versus righties. Maybe a little low on the extra base hits. His isolated power, though, is in a fine spot. Not too concerned about it. Gorman's results are more mixed, and that's why he's seen his contact go down. A lot of other things are on the rise. Mason Wynn. I look at prospects like him in this situation. All right, you're not performing great. Are you still getting better? The last thing I want to see is when like dropping anywhere. And thankfully everything is still on the rise, but he's not having a lot of offensive success. And you don't have to necessarily at short if you're a great defender. Tommy Edmond, ooh, ugly slash line there, only batting 206. That's uh, more of a bench player performance. Joe Adele is checking in here at the bottom, but contact is going up. 
Meanwhile, Kyle Gibson has just been outstanding. 76 innings, only given up three homers with a 250-80 ERA. Strikeouts are up a little bit. Sonny Gray's on a hot streak. Or no, that's Steven Matz on a hot streak. Sonny Gray has had a lot of really good outings. Andrew Kittredge out of the bullpen. Down to 70 overall, but doing a really nice job. Ryan Fernandez is up to 58 overall. So maybe there's a reason they picked him up in the Rule 5 draft. 14 and one-third innings. He's given up two runs in that time. Taking on the Astros. And Contreras just blasted two more homers in a 6-5 Cardinals win. So give him 13 now on the year. Jordan Walker had two errors in this game. Then we hit five homers the next day against Houston and win the game 9-8. to eight. The offense really coming alive for us in this game. Wow. And we're going to win this series against St. Louis, or against Houston, rather. Why don't we just sweep them and go to 33-29? and 29? I never saw this coming. Solano and Herrera go yard. That's the last time they'll ever both homer in the same game. Eight more brilliant innings from Sonny Gray. So have we seen this series get turned on its head here already? We're taking on the Rockies, Kyle Freeland. Hopefully they don't pinch run him in this game and have him get hurt. Uh, six to four, Rockies win. Austin Gomber. Okay, that is the Nolan Arenado trade coming full circle. This is going to be a little weird, but Tommy Edmond is going to get a game in here at shortstop. We're going to then have Solano play first, and we're going to move Walker into one of the corners. Looks like Tommy Edmond needs a day off. Never mind then, we're playing Brandon Crawford instead. Cardinals at 33 and 30. Let's go face Austin Gomber, who was a part of that Nolan Arenado trade package. Ultimately, the Rockies didn't end up getting a whole lot for Arenado and Story, considering one of those players they got nothing for. And there is Arenado, always jacked up to face his former team. And I uh, mixed up our pitching rotation. Just uh, I swapped Mats and Gibson. They both had full stamina. But I wanted to play the Gomber game, and I wanted to play a game with Kyle Gibson, given how great he's been this year is... Our most reliable starter, Charlie Blackman, hits one in the air to left, and the catch is made. Ryan McMahon's hitting 343, Nolan Jones 313, but very much a work in progress lineup in Colorado. They've developed some really good hitters, though, in their short history. I think impressive for how long they've been around, around 30 ish years. So hopefully they can do it again. That's a base hit for Alan Trejo. Bounced it through the right side, and the Rockies get a couple aboard on two ground balls. Ryan McMahon hitting 343, and that's going to be on the rise. Headed to the gap. Down. Ground rule double. Tried to mix in a high fastball there, and McMahon gets most of it. Brings up the catcher, Elias Diaz. He only gets five strikeouts per nine innings. We could really use one of those five here in the first. I've noticed the standard, though, seems to be strikeout percentage and not K per nine. I'm used to uh, K per nine. It's cleaner, I think, because if you have 9K per 9, then you're good for a strikeout per inning. It's a convenient unit of measure. Got him, though. Fishing upstairs. I suppose if you have a 33% strikeout rate, then no, that's not necessarily true. Because you can face five batters and get three outs, or three batters and get three outs. Newt Bar in center. The Rockies get one. And we face the lefty, Austin Gomber. Actually having a really solid year. Not a huge strikeout guy, but a lefty who can keep the ball down. 
So we don't want to fall for that sinker over and over again. The batting camera I use, by the way, is fisheye too, but I adjust it a little bit. I like a little bit more of a straight on look than like angled up or down. And I've just always used this camera since it really became a thing. I love having the, in my peripherals first and third base. Base hit Donovan Solano. That's down the line. I thought it was maybe a little early. Get back, everybody. I am not screwing things up today. It's just a, a nice single. The first to reach, and here is the former Rocky third baseman. Two aboard. Up and away with the slider. Arenado fourth right now in third base all-star voting. And he's done a good job with that changeup. I've got to let some of those go. I don't want that put in play. Ah, not that one, though. Strike three for Gomber. Brings up Contreras. Swinging a really hot bat the last month. And we're going to left center. That's extras. We're going to plate two as Contreras checks in at second base. Pure speed. Have a runner score from first. That wasn't speed. That was a fantastic hit. Both teams with three hits in the first inning. But we're not necessarily done. The rain could also affect things here a little rain delay might change the uh pitching outlook newt bar's numbers are pretty good a 12 game hit streak to go with it smashed it to short play is made it should be tovar there i'm pretty sure and then brandon crawford he was an all-star in 2015 he seems to make it every three years well guess what it's that third year and he's playing great Brandon Crawford at 66 overall. That was a good one. He has homered before against Gomber. Probably as a giant. Oh, he does it again! Crawford! Into the bullpen! A four spot in the first against the former Cardinals prospect. That's one of the more unexpected home runs I've hit in a while. Lefty lefty in the rain with 37 or yeah, 37 year old 66 overall Brandon Crawford. I'm telling you guys, this was not an expected chapter in our story of this year. Nolan Gorman has not been great though. Hitting 205. Had a great season last year. This season he still has some home run pop 11. Definitely on pace for a pretty good year there. But the average kind of speaks for itself. Gomber versus Gorman. And kind of mixed me up there, I guess. Solano's going to take care of Tovar. Down goes Sterling Thompson. Been a rough season for him, and Gibson picks up that second strikeout. And here is Brenton Doyle. Left it over the middle. Get the expected result. Base hit. Getting ahead of Charlie Blackman. He's got seven homers on the year. Not going to get eight on this swing. Arenado finishes off the top half of the second. Ooh, that's a nice piece of hitting. That was a contact swing put in the right spot for Brendan Donovan. We're certainly having a good night against Joe Adele, or um, against Austin Gomber. Let's see if Joe Adele can continue the fun. First pitch, and we're headed to right, but weakly. Easy play. 
And that just leaves Walker. Slider is in there. Nice eight-game stretch here for Jordan Walker. It seems they make the stands emptier when the weather is worse like that. I, I do appreciate that. Who wants to sit through this? Walker on the ground and pitching around the leadoff single. Gomber bounces back in the second. But looks like the umpires are saying this is a little too much. 45-minute rain delay. We're going to keep Kyle Gibson in there. This isn't his first rain delay. I'm sure he's fine. Well, we'll find out pretty quickly. Maybe I should get someone up just in case this doesn't go as planned. Trejo chops one to Hopper to Crawford. Just stretch. You know, it's good to stay flexible and stretched out, right? Four to one Cardinals, Nolan Jones. What they should do, though, is have uh, fan models that are all wearing those rain ponchos. That would help the immersion. Jones, 0-2. And, and that is sent down the line, but turns foul in front of Donovan. Gibson's command has been pretty solid on most of his pitches, including the circle change that earns strikeout number three. Maybe we don't try to challenge McMahon with that high fastball this time. Good pitch from Gibson. The one, two. Wow, I can't believe he fouled that back. Good take for McMahon. Now with the full count. Lifted shallow right. And for Gibby, two zeros back to back. He is way under it, and it's going deep to left. Nolan Arenado out of here. A towering fly to deep left. He was just trying to show how much he loves St. Louis by mimicking the shape of the St. Louis arch on that swing. 5-1 Cardinals. Oh, my. Deep to left and foul from Contreras. They faked me out there. I got a trophy. I thought I hit back-to-back -back homers. Ooh, nice stop. Beautifully done. That's a base hit for Newt Bar, and we're just hitting Gomber really well. Probably going to get into this rocky bullpen here soon. Brandon Crawford. Suddenly becoming one of our top performers lately. After giving up the home run, Gomber has no idea how to pitch to him, and it's currently a 3-0 count. I'll make him throw a strike first, and he can. But he can't do it twice. Two aboard. Well, that one isn't fair. That's just an umpire error. And Gorman takes it off the elbow pad. The bases are loaded up for Brendan Donovan. Cards already up four. A chance to really break it wide open in the third. I wanted it. A little early there. Left center field, and it's getting down. Will plate one. Get back to third in time, please, because I want to do it again. 6-1 St. Louis. And Gomber is looking a little somber. He's exiting the game. And in comes Anthony Molina, who has a 7.8 strikeout rate in 62 innings. What exactly is he getting all these innings for? Base is juice for Joe Adele. Ooh, fishing that time. New pitcher. Got to learn him. A little more velo. Got a piece. 
Adele hustling, but can't beat it out. It's a double play. Ooh, and Gibson's throwing stuff like that. So we're giving him a game worth sitting around for through a rain delay. We've become, what, four or five games above 500. In the mix for first place in the Central. Oh, Kyle Gibson. Nice play. Man, what does the rest of the season have in store? I'll tell you one thing. We will not be buyers. I'm not going to be giving up valuable prospects for anything. But it might delay the sell-off a little bit. That's to right field. And Chris Bryant, I forgot he was in this game. Gibby jumping ahead of Ezekiel Tovar. Oh, how are we going to score this one? Solano, man, come on. He was in the right spot. Is Gibby all right? That came off him pretty hard, obviously. I think it hit him in the cleat, though. See, I thought we were going to make a play here. Bang. Right off the shoe. Solano. No idea what to do. Two aboard, one down, and Sterling Thompson. Rockies trying to rally with the bottom of their lineup. Thompson's down two strikes. Number 97 prospect in baseball right here. He shoots it into center field, and the Rockies get their second. Gibson hasn't fallen behind too many batters today. Doyle 2-1. Waves at the slurve. Takes the next one. The count full. Top of the order about to come up again for the Rockies. Got him looking on the changeup. I think we've had one strikeout in every inning so far with Gibson. Got to keep that down. Charlie into the outfield, and that should bring home a run. Gibson suddenly giving up three now. And the Rockies bring the tying run to the plate. So it's not going to be a deep outing for Gibson. I'm seeing Gibson leave a lot more pitches, though, up over the plate. So I think maybe one more batter, and then we call it a day. Good fastball. Tapped it. Arenado does his thing, and we're out of the top of the fourth. Solano, all he does is hit. I forgot I had the option of, like, saving a game and quitting out. So it's now the next day as I'm continuing. Not quite sure exactly where I was with whatever it was I was talking about. But we got Jordan Walker here in the fourth, 6-3 Cardinals, high-scoring game in the rain. I did want to talk a little bit about kind of the team-building philosophy for this series. Walker, a fair ball, and oh God, get back. This is going to be an out. I thought I hit circle. No, come on, man. I got to be the worst base runner here on YouTube. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Out to right from Arenado, and not going to have a second base running error here in the inning. But when it comes to the players I want to add in this series and what I want to emphasize, I really want to get a lot of versatile players. And I don't want players who are really, you know, I, I don't like the modern baseball, like, obsession with Everybody needs to become a power hitter. I think there's a ton of square peg, round hole situations going on where guys are kind of making themselves play in a way that I don't think is best for them. That's a base hit, but I ain't running home on it. Contreras continues the inning. You know, I like a couple of the guys that we have, honestly, fit what I'm looking for with Donovan and Tommy Edmond. 
Two very versatile players, good defenders. I want to have, you know, a really good defense. I like range in the outfield. I'm not going to prioritize just getting a bunch of power in the lineup. Just not the style I like to play or the style I like to watch. And it's not that I don't want to emphasize power at all. It's just if all you have is power, I probably value you less than the greater baseball community. Joey Gallo ain't coming to this team. If you can't hit 200, you better have like the Kyle Schwarber like on base percentage because I'm just not going to put up with a guy hitting 191. For pitchers, I really like to get guys who emphasize control in the rotation. I think for like overpowering velocity, it's nice to have that, but I think I more so want that coming out of the bullpen. Off the dive attempt of Arenado and Nolan Jones reaches. And this might be the end of the road here for Kyle Gibson. Yeah. Let's get a mound visit in here. Got the lefty McMahon who doesn't really care if he's facing righties or lefties. We're going to go with Kittredge though. One of our better relievers for the heart of this rocky lineup. But I really like guys that are position flexible and I knock guys down internally, you know, like if I'm looking at a draft board, if you can play like third base and that's it, oh, that's going to hurt because I like to move guys around and I want to be able to make sure the lineup contains the best bats. And then if you can play a lot of roles, then we can figure out the defense later. McMahon rolls one to the right side. Come on. Quick turn. Double play. Line to center, and Elias Diaz has a hit. You know, I'm interested, too, in players that have position flexibility that you wouldn't expect. You know, like guys like MJ Melendez, who can play catcher plus the outfield. I just like having options there. Like, I think it'd be really cool if our backup catcher on the roster wasn't just, like, a low-level catcher. But what if it was someone who was position flexible and just plays catcher, you know, once a week, but otherwise comes off the bench and can maybe play in the outfield or something else? Probably not going to be able to check every box there as Bryant is sent packing. Ooh, that sounded nice. 109 from Brandon Crawford. So yeah, this team already has the start of what I'm looking for. There's a lot of versatility already in this lineup, even with guys like Walker. Maybe he's not a good fielder right now, but where could he be down the road? I've seen him suggested as maybe the long-term third baseman, but I think I'd want to prioritize better defense there. Especially if we get used to Arenado, I'm not going to want to go to like the 30th best third base defense in the majors. So first base or the outfield is what I see happening with him. Ooh, tried to go after that high slider, got nothing. You know, over the years, you've seen certain guys continually make teams because they're just so dangerous on the base paths. Guys like Terrence Gore or Billy Hamilton. I'd love to find someone like that. And, of course, I attempted back in my A's franchise as the fifth comes to an end. I drafted Luis Estrella, who was a power speed outfielder who struggled to stay healthy and ended up playing only a handful of major league games. It's an archetype that probably has one of the higher bust rates. But yeah, I love teams that are fast and can turn, you know, singles, just a couple singles into a nice scoring threat. Guys that can go first to third or score on one that's in the gap. It takes a little bit longer to get to. I want speed on this team. You're not going to get that with how old the roster is right now. Ezekiel Tovar here in the sixth. Attacked him low on four pitches. Takes the high fastball. And that'll take care of him. Are we having a second rain delay? 
I'm not sure I've seen two in the same game. This one's going to be 90 minutes. So combined, two hours and 15 minutes worth of rain delays. You know, I've always valued having high contact hitters on the teams as well, but last year I more learned the importance of having good discipline and guys who can take walks. It seems to be one of the stickier stats from year to year. Guys don't usually, like, slump one year to the next when it comes to drawing walks. I like that level of predictability in a rebuild especially. And the Cardinals are a team that I know will probably have a budget more in the mid to upper tier. It's over $200 million. We have some like superstar level contracts on the books right now. When it comes time for us to maybe get active and chase top free agents, I think it's too early to say because it's going to depend on what we're missing at that point. Charlie Blackman rolls one over. Ooh, didn't get him there. Got nothing at all, and the inning continues. You know, I, I thought there was only one out. All right, getting ahead of Trejo and trying to leave the Rockies down three. That's outside. How is anybody still at the ballpark after another 90-minute delay? Softly to Donovan in left. And that's the top half of the sixth. Solano just seems to get a hit every time. This guy is so reliable. Obviously, Solano's not someone we're going to build around for the bulk of this series, but it, just to see that skill set and how easily getting on base is for him, I mean, that's the value of that high contact skill set. Might not have a lot of power, but... He's been really good so far. It might be a reason why we've been able to win some games here lately. Oh, that gets away. Solano can move up to second base. Well, shouldn't have swung at that one. Jake Bird picks up the strikeout. Bounced it right back to Bird. He gets the next two. Solano still at second. And we'll see if Contreras can continue a really hot stretch. Nearly a 1,000 OPS. Really hitting at a high level. I mean, this team is doing something I didn't think they could. You know, we had Goldschmidt playing so well. We were still losing two-thirds of our games regardless. Bottom five hitting, bottom five pitching. Made it pretty easy to just like, all right, let's start the selling now. And then as we get healthier and maybe some guys just have some more regression to the mean. You have a team now that's not too bad. Contreras deep and it's run down on the track. Fishing is Nolan Jones. The count's evened up. We're trying to get that ERA down for Matthew Liberator. On the ground to Arenado. Good throw. I've been seeing a lot of feedback, too, in the videos so far that all-star classic pitching has been the move for many of you. Down goes Diaz. I don't know. I'm hoping that maybe there's, like, a bug and they can just, like, fix it. And then I can go back to Hall of Fame. That's the difficulty I just have played on, so I like the familiarity there. I like to pump up Gorman's numbers a little bit. Here we're 3-2, two, two down, bottom seven. Bounced it, and that is through. Gorman reaches. And Donovan continues a good night. And we've got two on now facing Lucas Gilbreth. Who do I have on the bench right now? Well, I got a righty up here in Joe Adele. I haven't done too well with him so far. Adele hitting 209 on the season. In this series, I'd love to have a, a chance to, you know, give a, a second chance to players like Joe Adele, guys who can maybe still reach some potential with a new home. So if I can find more opportunities like this, I always love those kind of deals and moves. Usually doesn't uh, take a lot to get these players. We had success in the A's franchise with the resurgence of Cody Bellinger. I'm down for those types of opportunities as well. 
And now at the full count, both runners will be on the move. Inside, and the bases are loaded up for Donovan Solano. Three hits on the night. Oh, come on now. 364 with runners in scoring position. And that batting clutch is extremely important. Solano actually, I think, has better clutch than contact. So if you just need good bat-to-ball skills, I mean, Donovan Solano, like I said earlier, way too good to be a free agent. Oh! Okay, fooled by the slider that time. Solano upset. And we'll give Liberator maybe a third inning. Trying to save some of the other bullpen arms. I guess the build, if I had to summarize the kind of offense I like, I want a team that can hit the homer, but doesn't need to rely upon it. That's what I can't stand, is these boomer bust offenses that seem to either score like two runs or eight. Walker coming in. Falling behind Thompson here. Liberator one out away from a really good outing. Really needs a good one and misses inside. And that is right at Walker, and he secures it. We're taking at least a three-run lead into the ninth. Walker sends one to the gap, and it is caught. Down goes Contreras, and we head into the ninth. Ryan Helsley will come out and looks to shut down the Rockies for another save. The Brewers won today, so we can only get to one game back. But we're getting close to being a first place team suddenly. We were never that far away, but I wasn't really comparing us to the top of our division. Not prioritizing a division title with such a fragile team build. But any sell-off now might be a little delayed with how well we've been looking. That is the first out. Trejo takes a slider into center, and the Rockies get one on. I believe that's like 12 hits now for Colorado. 102 fouled back. Routinely triple digits there with the heater. Just having trouble locating now, and it's a full count. McMahon on deck. Helsley, did he go? No. Pretty good pitch, but now two aboard for Colorado. One big swing away from turning this game around. Ryan McMahon in there at 100. 103 fouled back, just a piece. Can we get McMahon to chase? Doesn't have to there, but he pops it up into left field. Donovan, out number two. And that brings up Elias Diaz. And quickly, Ryan Helsley's ahead. Solano secures the game. And the Cardinals have won again. Donovan Solano does it all, except for, you know, make it the extra bag when I tell him to. Cardinals win this game, and if we're going to have to see what our record is now since April ended, because we got to be one of the best teams lately. Didn't get the deepest outing out of Kyle Gibson, but the bullpen clearly did a really good job. Just three hits allowed and no earned runs. The season opened for us with an 11 and 19 record at the end of April. Since then, we are 23 and 11. I don't expect that level of success to continue.
But it's given us a chance now at competing for this division. A game back of the Brewers were 34 and 30. Right now, the Reds are the only team that's really falling out of the division hunt. If we don't end up trading anybody else away, I'm honestly okay with that. Our most valuable players we could possibly trade are on multi-year deals anyway. So if we're going to go ahead and win, then the plans to deconstruct the team further in season are probably not going to happen. We've gotten healthy. Nobody else is on the injured list. We got Wilson Contreras playing at a really high level. Same with Donovan Solano. Solano's already accounted for a .6 war in 60 at-bats. Lars Nootbaar is hitting 312 with an 868 OPS. Brandon Crawford, 317, 863 OPS. With a team as hot as this, who knows what this season could turn into. But we're now 64 games into the season. We're getting closer to the MLB draft. Maybe year one ends up taking a bit longer now than I expected if we keep this up and stay in that playoff picture. We're going to get closer, though, to the All-Star break here before too long, and then we'll see what direction this team goes in. The offense is scoring a lot more runs, up to 17th now after a really weak start to the season. And despite trading away an MVP candidate at the time, we're a top 10 home run hitting team. And the pitching, while not great, has improved. So what do you think, everybody? I'm looking forward to your feedback as we continue on with the Cardinals franchise. I'll have much more coming your way shortly. Really enjoying getting started here in year one. Can't wait to see what's next. Please leave a like if you enjoyed today's episode. Subscribe to the channel. And I will see you all in the next one. Have a great day.